All right, all right, all right. Maybe Olima isn't that bad. What's up, YouTube? What to know? My name is Domino with Zero, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review, this time of episode 65, titled Olima and Eevee Make Their Illum Appearance. You can tell by the title that this episode was a little strange, a little out there, a little extra, which describes Alima perfectly. Recapping last week, um, we saw an episode focused around Passimian where Ash felt bad about losing the Passimian of the Melee Melee Greens fruit, and he helped them get it back fighting off the Akala Red Buns. Now, if you did check out today's episode, as always, let me know what your favorite part was in the comments down below and let me know if you have any differing thoughts about anything than I do. This episode starts off with Illumis Eevee fighting against a veteran trainer in Mele Mele Island. And we find out later on in the episode that Illuma has traveled back and we'll explain where he was from and all of that, but he's absolutely destroying this Eevee. You can see this Eevee looks nice and damaged that he's going up against. Why do we have to show animal abuse right at the very beginning of the episode? And he, he won. I don't think he got hit at all, but he definitely won. After winning, the veteran trainer tosses Alima an Eeveum Z. So we know we're gonna be seeing Eevee Z move in this, and it was pretty cool when it did come up. That's where the intro ran. It was a very quick little opening segment. As the episode begins, Ash and Toricat are training against Kiawe and Turtonator. Tur uh, Toricat goes for a flame charge, Turtonator goes for a dragon tail, and they clash. But Toricat's able to push through a little extra, and Kiawe calls everyone to stop. And the group is like, oh, Toricat has gotten so much stronger. Litten would have been blown back by that. Like. Duh, it's evolved. So it gets the group on the conversation talking about evolution and they're trying to figure out exactly who's gonna evolve next. On Sophocles' shoulder, Togedemaru looks excited like he wants to be the one to evolve next and, and he points out, that might be a little difficult for you, but then asks Ash, how come you're not gonna, how come you haven't evolved Pikachu? And the whole group starts talking about, doesn't Pikachu evolve into Raichu? Won't it evolve into a Lolan Raichu since we're here in Alola? And Ash has just a quick moment of, we've decided that Pikachu's good just like he is, and they made up their mind on not evolving a long time ago. Like, like Sophocles, what you don't understand is that Ash decided not to let, or not to have Pikachu evolve before you were even born. So just think about that for a minute. Just think about that for a minute, Sophocles. Let that one, let, let that one carry you to sleep tonight. At this point, we hear a group of screaming girls up on top of the Pokemon school, excited that Alima has showed up. And Alima's walking up, being the being the extra little princess fanboy that we've grown to know that Alima is. Now, I had said something in, a, in, in last episode that I thought that Ash had already fought Alima. I was mistaken. This is definitely Alima's first uh, first appearance in the anime. Um, but apparently, as Sophocles goes to explain. Um, Alima is pretty much the prized possession of the Pokemon school. The trophies that sit inside of uh, Professor Oak's uh, office are mostly won by Alima himself. Apparently he's even so popular that Komala, the one that rings the bell, will open his eyes for him and the group then wonders what Komala's eyes will look like. Apparently, Alima has been off studying in Kalos. We see that Alima is meeting with Kukui and Professor Oak privately, and this is where they're talking about Alima's time in Kalos, where it's then confirmed that that's why he's visiting there. But, he must not have been there for very long, because, you know, there was kind of this big destruction arc, you know, with Team Flare and Lysander and Zygarde, and there was just kind of a Pokemon League where um, we had the worst Pokemon battle of all time that was like right after one of the best Pokemon battles of all time and a lot of explosions and a lot of mega evolution and I don't think the word mega was even announced at all in this episode so it's a little interesting to see what you know the, the those dynamics it was it was a little interesting to hear them talk about that. Akukui goes on to explain that he's making a Pokemon League in Alola in the future and asks Alima to participate in it. 
So is that foreshadowing that maybe, because we know that Ash will likely be competing in this Pokemon League, will Alima be a part of that tournament at some point? The kids show up at that door and ask Alima to show them about these legends and rumors that Sophocles and the rest of them that did know of Alima were spreading. They take him up to the top of the tower where Komala rolls over to Alima and his eyes like flicker twice or his eyes like twitch twice, but then he rolls away hardly with any other reaction. This visibly upsets everyone, especially Rotom, who is just upset. He's going to uncover this, the, the news story of the year and gets knocked into the bell by Komala. Now, at this point, we see goggles. We see like a, a, a binoculars being used. And I thought, Team Rocket, cool, no big deal. Turns out it's actually Team Skull watching from afar. And they go back to recruit more goons. Now, when it gets back to Team to Team Skull's uh, Team Skull's base, that music was it was bumping, it was banging. That music was absolute flames. Uh, and this is it's exactly what we said. They're going to recruit more. They're going to take on Alima. What what do they have against Alima? Find out shortly. Alima then confirms that a lot of the rumors and legend, legends that were going around were just rumors and nothing true. Uh, but Sophocles is like, oh yeah, that sounded unlikely that he was jumping off of the top of the Pokemon school. And Alima goes, well, wait, wait, wait. That one was actually kind of true. And apparently this thing is called Pokedie. So we're just taking anything and turning it into a Pokemon event. So uh, last episode we had Poke Football. This episode we have Pokey Dive. Spoiler, next episode we have Pokey Ping Pong. So what's next? Pokey Bowl? What's next? Pokey, hold on, I'm just looking around. Pokey Orchestra? What's up next? Pokey, 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 Pokey. Everything around here is actually Pokemon. So never mind. So Alima has introduced the entire group to Pokey Dive and somehow the group very quickly changes into their swim trunks and they start practicing this, this Pokey Dive stuff. Lana is obviously the most successful at it. She's a water trainer. Ash and Pikachu jump from a little higher up. They run into each other and they belly flop right in. Kiawe is like, we're up next. And he's with Marowak and everyone's like, are you sure you want to do that, Kiawe? And Kiawe's like, yeah, what? why not? And he goes, he dives in, boom, good dive. And then everyone's like, and Marowak is sitting at the top, looking down, shaking. He's absolutely terrified. And he always in the water going, Marowak? Marowak? Everyone asks Alima to demonstrate. And Alima goes to the very, very, very top of the tree where he does a very professional dive where he gets up on a handstand. If you've watched the Olympic diving, you've seen this before. He goes off it and he probably does about 18 flips before he lands. Perfect dive because of course he does a perfect dive. Mr. Mr. Perfect here. As the group is leaving the school, they're done for the day. He explains, uh, Sophocles is going on again about how come, how come you're not evolving Eevee? And Alima's like, well, I've known Eevee for a long time, and I think there are more ways to make Pokemon stronger than just by evolving them. For example, and pulls out his Z-Ring and shows off his EVMZ. And you know as soon as Ash Ketchum sees something, I'm telling you, Ash Ketchum and Goku are very much alike, but one of them is much less ignorant. I'll let you decide which one is much, much less ignorant. But Ash challenges Alima to a battle, Pikachu versus Eevee, to which he accepts. Ash versus Alima comes up. Both groups have their cheerleaders. We have the screaming girls for Alima. We have all of the rest of the kids for Ash. And Team Skull rolls up. And they roll up in a pretty big gang. They were not messing around. But Team Rock or Team Skull points out that. It's, it's disappointing, Ilima. You still haven't evolved that Eevee and that Salandit's going to be evolving any day now. It didn't clarify at all, but do we know if this guy is Salandit is female or male? I have a feeling it's probably male and it won't be evolving. I wonder what Team Skull's role is going to be. Then again, we haven't seen Guzma, so I guess we haven't really, or Plumeria, so we haven't really seen anything of Team Skull, which is exciting. That means that we have a long way to go with their development. Hopefully they get some good screen time. 
at Alima, there you know, there you still haven't evolved that Eevee, and what are you doing, and this and that, and you know, I'm gonna get my revenge on you, and Alima's like, there's a car horn going off behind me. No, Alima is like, um, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are. And they go on to explain this main Team Skull grunt. It says he's jealous that Alima stole his luck with the ladies. Now, this guy was looking, well, like a total nerd and like he had absolutely no chance with his Alolan Grimer. No offense to you if Alolan Grimer is your Pokemon, but if you're going for luck with the ladies, you need to pick something cuter than Alolan Grimer. That's just, that's just advice from me. Take it or leave it. Um, but, all, you know, He's showing off his Alolan Grimer and Alima's walking past with his Eevee. The girls are flocking towards Alima. So this Team Skull Grunt decided that he didn't like him. And all of the rest of the, of the male Team Skull Grunts feel the exact same way. The four female Grunts that are with them are like, yeah, we're going to team up with you as well. They all send out their Pokemon in a huge mob to which you're like, well, I imagine Alima's probably going to say he can take them all off on, on his own. And he does. Um, <laughs> the group runs up, and Ash is like, "We'll help." And Alima's like, "Nah, it's okay. I, I can, I can, I can probably do this." He starts off just like er just like every battle we ever see in the anime with a quick attack. Eevee dashes through them, jumps up, and uses baby doll eyes. Baby doll eyes, causing all of the group to fall in love with this Eevee. After the first mob of Pokemon get blasted away by this by this baby doll eyes and they can't battle, they throw out an additional three mons. They throw out their Salandit, their um, Garbodor, and their Zubat. Their three aces, and Salandit's the only one that's able to land. He uses a flame burst, Eevee gets hit by the excess flames. Alima goes, all right, you think I'm down, but I'm not. Eevee stands back up. It's time to use the Z move. He hits it. It's a, it's, he does the Normalium Z thing, and he calls for all of the Eevees. It shows a big aura go over the entire island, and we see all of the individual Eevees start running up, and they all run up in a group. And, you know, I'm a trombone player. You probably knew this, and the trombone was going in right here. Where can I sign up to do that myself? I could be in there. I could be playing that. that that's a whole nother story. After the animation, which admittedly was a little underwhelming, I'll be perfectly honest, I think in-game they absolutely nailed it. Didn't look quite as good in the anime, but it was still very cool to see all of those evolutions together, all of them on the screen at the same time. And Alima explains now Eevee stats have all risen. And the at this point, all the Team Skull girls are now going on about how cute Eevee is. Team Skull has lost at this point. But the way that they get blasted off is by Alima using a last resort. Now, I don't know what I expected to happen. We saw Quick Attack. We saw Baby Doll Eyes. We saw Swift. It only makes sense now that the fourth move be last resort. And it just looks like a really big Swift. I don't think last resort has ever been in the anime. I think this was the very first time. And again, what did I expect? It makes perfect sense for Last Resort to just be a big looking Swift. Team Skull gets all blasted off, at, to, at which point Alima says that his battle with Ash will have to be postponed until another time, but Alima will be back in the following episode. So maybe we'll still get to see the Alima versus Ash battle, because I think it would actually be pretty good. Um, you know, there's the argument that maybe Ash's Pikachu should never have a difficult battle. But that would kind of ruin parts of the anime. Uh, I think it should be a good battle. I do think that Ash's Pikachu should come out on top. I think the amount of times that Ash's Pikachu should get beaten is very limited. I think you should have to you should have to make a pretty good argument to get Ash's Pikachu down. But that was the end of the episode. In next week's episode, we see that they're doing ping pong. Actually looks like a pretty fun episode, a pretty funny episode, but another filler episode is happening. Um, we see um, that Lily's a pansy. Her eyes have the little anime looking eyes and she's swinging all over the place. Um, we see Kiawe's using a Z move because of course he is. I feel like he tries to use that thing every chance he gets. Lana is just confirmed to be a meme at this point. Jesse and Wabafet are teaming up and Wabafet is broken. 
using his counter to counter back the ball. And then we see some random unique character with the Mian Shao going against Alima and Smeargle. That happens next week. Again, if you checked out the episode, let me know what your favorite part was in the comments down below. Let me know if I missed anything. I don't think there was anything story related in this episode. I hope we get back to seeing something with the Ultra Guardians. Poi Pole is still out there. When is something going to happen? But anyway, we will see you in the next review. Until then, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.